Out of all the series that could really use more movies to expand upon their story, I always thought that Cabin Fever was one of them! Oh, there's a big shock, me being sarcastic! I tried to forget that Cabin Fever ever existed. Do I really have to review this? I hate you text at the bottom of the screen! Oof! Faced. I hate you too! Cabin Fever 3, based on the overwhelming demand for more entries in this series, will have a very limited theatrical release, but luckily for me, it's already out on DVD and Blu-ray, so I can review it. LUCKILY! So, Sean Astin is in this. Really, Sean? You're Raphael, damn it, man! At least in this film he has the power to take his pants off in slow motion. Oh yeah. He's the lone survivor of another outbreak of cabin fever. See, see, he, he was in a cabin at the start. That gives him the right to still call this cabin fever. Okay, now cabins can fuck off. They're not in the rest of this. I love that in three of these movies, one of them have been about one part of the title. A cabin. We still have yet to see a fever. Or an actual cabin fever. Incidents in the States were isolated, successfully contained. They were, were they? I'll take your word for that, considering we were shown bloodied up people all escaping authorities or pancake fuckers getting emergency pancake zarians. But he was never the same after that. Waffles! I don't even know who you are anymore. Actually, yeah, I do. You're an annoying little shitter. Never mind. Anyway, that line about containing the other outbreaks is our only drop-in line connecting this to the other two pieces of shit. I was kind of hoping one of the partying douche bras would have mentioned how their cousin Party Cop would have came, but he was on assignment to a big party! Wait, I wanted a mention of Party Cop? Shit, these movies are giving me party cop fever! The sample arrived this morning. It's not a sample, it's a patient. Yes, he's patient zero. And there's our reason for the patient zero subtitle. Really makes sense when he's not the first at all. Might have made sense if this was a prequel, which the subtitle makes it sound like, but whatever, who cares. Sean Astin is going to get experimented on in the Batcave since he is a carrier of the disease, but has flesh that ain't afraid of no fever. Or virus, as it actually is. <laughs> I assume that's a lab rat. Might want to get them. Oh, never mind, it'll turn up in the cave. You know what? It likely doesn't matter. I'm sure there are plenty of wild rats in here anyway. This really seems like the best setup for trying to contain a flesh eating virus, but don't forget, they set up the super security of a politely worded sign. You have an incredible opportunity to do something special. I can't help you. I wasn't asking. Everyone's a dick? Yep, everyone's a dick. Cabin fever, check! Now what else could we ever pad out a lazy piece of shit horror film with? Oh, right, stupid partying fox! So yeah, this piece of wood giving us blue steel is unfortunately our main character, Marcus. He will be mostly giving us that look through the entire film. He will smile at certain points, but don't let this fool you. There is no real emotion behind that dead smile. This is the face of death! To sum up, he's kind of bland. Filling out the rest of the cast are drugs, alcohol, and sex. <clears throat> I mean his douche bra party friend, douche bro brother, and his bro's girlfriend, Penny Lane, who cheated around with Marcus Woody previously. This'll be very important by the fact that they'll mention it a couple times. That is all. 
All right, all right. Positives. Um, uh, well, I can say a lot of the landscape shots look really nice. Except that really shaky one there. What the hell? Positives over! The Idiot Brigade are here in the Dominican Republic for Marcus's wedding. Ah, oh, this is pretty. Ah, uh, clever remark. Oh, I was just thinking we could go for an overused trope, and she gives Penny Lane here an amulet, you know. It's for your protection. Cause she senses that evil flesh-eating virus, cause that's super mystical and shit. Hey, if you got supernatural spoilers, I think that'll be a bit more useful than here, choke yourself with this necklace. Bro, we've been planning this for months. <laughs> One last night of freedom with the old crew and a chartered trip to a deserted tropical island. Wow, it sounds like the worst bachelor party ever. Hey, let's be stuck on a deserted island for your bachelor party. It'll be great, cause there's a beach. You know, unlike the one at the resort we're currently at. I know it's a reason to get them to where they're gonna die, but they could've at least brought a party crowd with them. I really don't buy that these two douche bras would do a bachelor party somewhere that they couldn't ogle women. <coughs> Come on, you fucking pussy whipped boy. Anyway, my girlfriend's coming, bro, cuz you're so pussy whipped. Oh, you wanna talk? Okay. How's my wife? She don't let her son. Does she? They all ran after the farmer's wife and cut off their tails with a carving. Potato, 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 Holy shit, is this a case of someone actually going a little stir crazy? AKA cabin fever? I don't know, maybe. I'll give it to Cabin Fever 3. It's the closest we're gonna get to anything like the actual symptom. It's kinda hard to tell though, cause Aston's kind of a dick regardless, as he purposely cuts himself so he can infect someone else. It really makes sense with a hostile and highly infectious patient to allow them such freedom and not have a way to sedate them before entering, huh? But now that Aston has been bad, Dr. Heider lets him know he's not mad, he's just disappointed. Yeah, bam, take that, won't be doing that again. The situation has been contained. Hello? I'm sorry, doctor. As you know, protocol requires a mandatory facility lockdown of 48 hours. All of the staff will be temporarily transferred to the evacuation bunker. Yes, I am clearly the leader of this supposed US operation. Trust me, the disembodied voice. Yes, that was kind of weird. And no, you'll never see him. I believe I have stated my displeasure with this before, but FUCK I AM SO TIRED OF SEEING THIS SCENE! There is nothing different here, it's just padding with the same damn fucking cock ass bitch ass shithole scene and I'm sorry to be so fucking ginger dead man too funny there. Ahem, <clears throat> just seeing this shit brings out the best in me. We could do something here that I've heard of working in other films, it's called character development. But nah, we'd waste precious party time, so let's give this the dialogue it deserves. Looks like you guys were doing some pretty good partying, huh man? Bet you like to party. Have yourself a big 40, just party. You gotta stay and party. I'm telling you man, this is a major party town, so I know they're gonna party hard with me. Their top priority is a party man. Do you realize how many great parties we're gonna have? Parties. Party. Fucking party man. Guess the party ain't over, huh? We have a long night of partying. I got you something meaningful to help prepare you for your new life. What is this little Joshy? What'd you get me? What, what is this? Acting lessons. Oh man. Nah, it's far more hilarious than that. A dildo. <laughs> Hi, I'm 
just casually changing from my bikini to my bikini. I think you have ulterior motives, madame. No shit. Fuck me. <laughs> Come on, you're, you're with Josh now. Josh is fun, but not serious. Kate's serious, but not fun. Maybe we both made the wrong choice. Wow, I was some worried someone wouldn't be a douche here, but I'm glad to learn she's a bitch. And stupid. Sure, try to get that plank of wood to not only betray his fiance, but also his brother at the same time. Plus, I'm sure it'd take them a good two minutes to find you two doing it here on this tiny ass boat. I hear a mountain lion. <sighs> Oh, that's the deserted paradise, huh? <laughs> it's not even on the map. Wow, so not only could we get lost, but we could also get killed by poisonous or vicious wildlife. Win-win bachelor party. The flesh-eating virus just seems like overkill at this point, doesn't it? I mean, they're gonna do themselves in soon enough. They also managed to pick the most deserted of deserted islands with a facility on it. But it's okay, cause Captain Ahab says, yeah. Nobody home, nobody home. So he's just gonna drop them off here, cause if they weren't stuck, it wouldn't be cliche enough. Plus we need another log on the dumbest party in the universe fire. Douche bro and bitch friend go for a lovely dive, getting almost away from the surface a couple times until a bunch of dead fish kill the mood and them. Spoilers! But yes, these two are now... Infected with the T-Virus! And Penny Lane immediately shows a rash from it. I didn't know that getting it through the massive delusion of the ocean made it super effective. Also, the entirety of the ocean is going to be infected soon if it works that well, so goodbye Earth! <laughs> In other important news, Woody and Douchebra are high. Wait, did I say important? I meant what the movie makes you waste your time seeing. News. Barf. This shouldn't be happening. The virus is attacking faster than before. No, I'd understand a faster infection rate from being covered in the carrying blood, not the ocean. Then again, Cabin Fever 2 didn't seem to think that being covered in infected blood was that big a deal, so maybe she's right. And now that Buddy is puking his guts out, it's apparently time to do something! Which is of course, hey, look over there, huh? What? Got him, damn it! They're just testing a virusite. The what? And that's a good thing. Maybe for you, I will always be a carrier. Well, with that attitude... Also, no, if they made a working cure, it should stop you from being infectious as well. No, nah, don't bring that up. Doctor, we only have one suit left. Well, I guess only one of you can go in then. Nope, gotta be stupid. Barf. The stupid plan was stupid. Well, I'll be. No, you fool. Water only makes it stronger. Josh, you in here? Hope she's all cleaned up. Daddy don't like no salty cooch. Oh darn, and just when I was about to feel connected to these characters. Penny Lane is now covered in giant throbbing blisters and Douche Bro has a rash on the back of his leg. I guess the virus just liked her more. They swam through the dead fish water the exact same. There is really no reason for this, but I guess maybe now it's time to, uh, leave? There you go. You just need a little distraction until the Benadryl kicks in. Of course not! These people are idiots! Giant freaking swords hardly seems like a strong reaction to anything! So he of course goes down on her. Can you guess what will happen immediately? I sure hope so, cause it's pretty damn obvious. I didn't notice the blood first cause I'm a fucking idiot! We then cut from stupid to stupid as Woody lets Douche Bra know he's still been going down Penny Lane, despite acting what was between the two was long over in their previous scene. You're fucking your brother's girl? Technically, he's fucking my girl. Uh, ex -girl. Your, your super secret ex-girl <laughs> is awesome. Oh, what wonderful fucking pricks. Can they die now? Barf. 
So of course, now that there's an emergency, it's time for the tired old can't make contact with the outside world spot. There was a structure on the north side of the island. Oh yeah, the super secret building on the unmapped island. I'm sure they'd love to know we're trespassing. Again, didn't need the virus for this to have been a stupid plan. Penny, she's gonna be fine, all right? She's with your brother, her boyfriend. I thought it was hilarious to see it earlier you were a fucking scumbag, but now that you're looking for help, clearly this is just a play to get in her pants again, and your brother is the instant cure for vomiting blood. No big deal. So after yet another rendition of People Act Like Shits, they noticed the lit up building was right beside them. And of course, the secret facility used for super sensitive testing on highly volatile virus viruses <laughs> is easily broken into with a rock. Douche bro eventually gets a response on the radio. What's going on with that radio? Where are you located? We're on a small uh, inferno island or something and we need medical help. Dr. Edwards, I'm a surgeon at a small facility. Same island. I know by you saying you're on some island, it means you're on the same one as me. Wait, where, where can I find you? It's a small island. Find them. Located on. Hello? Hello? Shit! Okay, he's at the facility, dumbass. You don't need directions. It's a small island, and you've seen where it was. I'm supposed to know to circle around the island if he doesn't tell me. Come on, let's, let's get going. Come on. Ah! Takes me a long time to realize when something is slightly going wrong. We then see the whole lab is in disrepair with the dimwit duo as they are forced to go in further because it's designed to keep people in not keep people out. If only they could lift that shutter, which is exactly what Woody did before breaking the window. Guess that really only works from the outside. Ooh, looks like someone read their overused horror spots book today. Yes, we are seriously doing the suspenseful build up to opening something, the reveal of nothing with quiet to be finished with the scare. This movie is a rude jerk. It's like, yeah, I know you see it coming. I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway. I ain't striving to be a classic or nothing. I got your money already. Go. Fuck yourself. I really wish this movie was the revenge of pancakes and party cop and American cousin had to come and lay the smack down on his pan rabbit cake doctor ass. You have me wishing for stupid. Are you happy yet, cabin fever? Because you know what? Stupid would at least be entertaining. <laughs> There's zombies. Yes, even though it's a flesh-eating virus that kind of turns you into guts mush after a certain amount of time, the infectees in the lab act like zombies. No reason given, just the movie got bored of itself, I suppose. But at least they use this to add some character death to Woody after he realizes he's had to become a murderer. <laughs> just kidding. don't have to try anymore to make me hate slow motion action spots. I've been there for quite a while already. You can stop now. Also, good to know that the deteriorating sick man is like a brick wall. Makes sense. I, I can go get help, alright? I know a great plastic surgeon. He, he did my ex-girlfriend's, you know, great job. Please, please, please. Okay, one, that's not how the kickback would work. Maybe it'd rip the wrist or arm off, but not do a magical twirly do. Two, he's a brick wall, huh? And three, and most important, where did the bullet go? The kickback tearing his arm off after firing doesn't nullify the bullet. He was still aiming right at him. They could have at least shown it miss, so it doesn't just seem like the bullet quit the film before the scene was done. 
on. So wait, the dude's arm rips off and I don't actually do anything yet? I don't think so. Good day, Cabin Fever 3. Things transmitted by blood? That's impossible. Does this guy ever look where he's going? And why is he so much weaker than sick people? Were you just gonna leave me back there? No, man, look, I was coming back for you. I wouldn't have just left you down. You locked the door. Okay, you whoa, 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 hey, hey. Look, man, just don't make me hurt. Really, you're gonna shoot me? Great fucking bachelor party. Wow, takes a lot to ruin this guy's party, huh? Um, yes, things were going swimmingly until this. I can't believe you. And really, this is the most emotion the Woodsters shown. Anyway, in a shocking twist, it's time to be dicks. We fucked your girlfriend. Tell him, Marky. And now the payoff to the cheating shitter storyline. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your time being wasted with that. Who are you? Oh. Hey, uh, we have a medical emergency. Dr. Edwards told us to come here. Really? I, I can help you as long as we move fast. Stop! She's one of our most highly contagious patients here. She's the contagious one. Well, here's an actual shocking twist. That one of the first people infected is somehow in much better shape than everyone else infected upstairs. And she can talk perfectly with no less. Except... So, you might remember that their area was quarantined off earlier, so how did our twit trio get down here? Well, what's the dumbest thing you can think of? The press of a single button? You get it! Freaking security! Dr. Heider doesn't recall getting a call from Douche Bro earlier, so yes, this means Aston called. Obviously, no one would notice that. I mean, what are they there for? To monitor him or something? No, of course not. This is the idiot facility where they let you build blanket forts. You think him building a blanket fort is suspicious? Nah, he's trustworthy. Besides, when he's killing people. He lured you here under false pretenses. He's gonna take your boat and he's gonna leave you behind. The award winning scholar gets off the island all by himself. And no one knows that he is responsible. And once they realize the virus is in the water, this apparently leads credence to Aston's The Doctor is Evil story. Even with the other doctors. Did you know about this? Of course not. This isn't my facility. You know, maybe there was a sanitation line that led to the ocean, maybe not. What, am I, am I supposed to know where they keep the fucking trash? Yes! Yes, you should! You're working with a deadly virus! You should know if you're disposing of things in a manner that can spread the infection! If a virus of this magnitude was allowed to escape and becomes a pandemic... A pandemic? The guy who created the vaccine would be a hero. I'm not trying to be a hero. I'm trying to save lives. That's why Porter's so important to you. He's the key to the vaccine. To your legacy. Of of course that's why he's important to him. A legacy changes fucking nothing about using him to find the cure. And why would he need to cause another outbreak of this virus? It's happened twice and caused a bunch of fatalities. I think finding the cure might get some press already. Dr. Gullible Bitch says they've got to blow the place up to stop the spread of infection. Uh, yeah, just a little late for that. Oh wait, they'll just blow up the entire ocean too. I'm the idiot. Where's your boat? They're waiting for us on the beach, just over there. I'm in so much worse shape than her for no reason. Oh, duh. And Douche Bra is taking the doctor to the beach in wave two. Why didn't they just go together? Well, cause they wanted to do the exact same scene we just saw with Douche Bro and No Lips with these two. And the doctor shows what a stand up guy he is by shooting the unconscious man. Then it's the showdown of Penny Lane and No Lips. Penny Lane's hair is just really inconsistent in this scene as sometimes she's still got hair on the top of her head and sometimes it's gone. Anyway, these two have a massive brawl! It's kind of a funny scene, but why are these two solid enough to be doing this when they are some of the earliest infectees? Maybe they got a treatment from Dr. Mambo. Oh, first. As soon as they go into the tent, you know the finish of this battle. 
metal. Yeah, of course. It's dildo time. Why wouldn't it be? And then they both die. Which you knew would happen regardless of who won. So... Thank you for that. Oh, well, here's some good sense. Dr. Doak says Woody has to die since he's probably infected. Then non-fatally shoots him. Sense? I miss you! Please come back! Am I the only one who has the courage to do what's necessary? What's right? Potter, do something! I'm the only chance he has of seeing his wife again. Potter! Your wife's already dead! Mm, what you say? Well, of course you did. Mm, what you say? Mm, that Together, we could have stopped this virus. Together! some sort of god. Yes, he thinks he's some kind of god. What? He was shot in the neck. Shouldn't this speech be a bit more like... Nothing but a... Is he rat. still going? To be or not to be, whether it is... <laughs> The new Twit Trio gets saved because... Well, because it's the end of the movie, so Captain Nobody's Home just shows up before dawn. I thought you guys could use a drink. Wow! Unlabeled water bottles delivered to us by Mr. Trustworthy himself? Let's drink it! Oh, shocking twist. The guy who didn't want to be experimented on anymore has killed the last two people that know who he is. And he was such a nice guy before this. Oh, killing me? Great bachelor party. But, you know, it's water. It's clear, the blood should have been obvious, but apparently it's blood that only reveals itself after you know about it. What a brilliant twist! Sure he had to cast a magic vanish spell on his blood for it to work, but that just makes it extra clever! Butter. <laughs> Butter. I wish I could scream your name! So yes, Aston has won. And he's really fast, apparently. <laughs> but Aston's family and his stupid movie friends are now dead, so was this really a victory? I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. And for the last insult, after the Woodster reveals that a mouse caused the outbreak upstairs, they realize Aston did that too, and they show it in reverse during the credits like it was a really clever twist. But here's the thing, he was a dick the whole time, and the person he got them to turn on, Dr. Dork, was a dick too. Maybe if he had actually been a good guy, there would have been a slight amount of weight to the reveal that Aston betrayed them. And the moronic mass mouse infection relies on too much stupid and random for it to have been a clever plan, which the movie tries to present it as. First off, he had to be lucky that the mouse would even leave his cell, plus be unnoticed, cause, you know, it could have ran anywhere and more likely would have ran away from people. Not this mouse, though. It, of course, evacuated with everyone. Which leads to one of the biggest points of stupidity he had to rely on. Because guess what? Usually when you have an area you need to quarantine, you don't have a mass exit from the area you are quarantining! Was a degree in shoving pencils up your nose required to work at this lab? Seriously? THEY LEAVE THE QUARANTINE AREA?! THAT'S THE EXACT OPPOSITE OF A QUARANTINE! Then, if he's lucky enough that the mouse gets that far, he had to rely on the mouse again not acting typically and not avoiding the humans before it dropped dead to infect them. Or it just could have left the lab, but at least Aston had the foresight to cast his blood vanish spell on the mouse. And the most Aston would get from this plan is being stuck in his cell. If he just wanted to kill everyone, alright, but he seemed pretty desperate through this thing to get out. 
And to do that, he had to luck into other morons being on the island and managing to even make it to him. Cabin Fever 3 is just full of characters making ridiculous decisions to make its moronic plot work. They do nothing to make us give a shit about anyone and recycle easily telegraphed scenes that were overused well before this. The party idiots just blab on about a bunch of things that don't feel relevant. Woodster with his marriage and possibly possibly still having feelings for Penny despite her being with his brother is a dead end. His brother shrugs it off and when Penny dies, Woody gives us a really heartfelt oh well blue steel about it. What they talk about doesn't gel with or enhance the overall plot. Instead, everyone just gets a moment to be a real piece of shit so you don't care about them. So overall, it's the best Cabin Fever film I've seen. Maybe. It's definitely better than one. Hey, the characters were douches, but at least they weren't written by Eli Roth. Ooh, faith! <laughs> Proper lab there, strap them down, hook them to IVs, and keep them well sedated. No movie!